It was some of the future of this uh, anti-TNF therapies, like I think it's Humira is one therapy. Uh, should centenarians who have high TNF, you know, be prescribed this? I don't, I haven't seen any studies. You know, there are some really interesting studies showing that people with rheumatoid arthritis who get on the anti-TNFs do seem to have this decrease in all-cause mortality, but it's a little bit confounded because like when the drugs first came, um, a lot of like in the U.S. where you have insurance companies, only people who would have insurance coverage would have access to them first and then there's a socioeconomic thing. So, you know, you have to sort of keep access questions in mind when you interpret a lot of these studies. But, um, you know, I will say there are a, quite a few, not quite a few, but there are some examples of like immune modifying things at high dose, which are like chemotherapeutics and like, you know, really serious drugs at lower doses, we use them as immunomodulators. So like methotrexate, um, um, and there's a couple other drugs like that. So, and then there's also other things like baby aspirins to prevent stroke, or those sorts of things. Ozempic, uh, metformin all seem to have this sort of health and longevity increase. And again, when we think about the pillars of geroscience movement, like if you fix one thing, everything seems to get a little bit better. Like which is the cheapest and easy of those strings to pull at to help immune health in old age. And I think the jury's still out, but I think it's a really exciting time to investigate that. Yeah. So if someone did have high TNF and knowing all the negative consequences that come with that, right. Wouldn't one part of the strategy I'd say, yeah, probably right. So then, okay, wait, so then TNF uh, alpha knockout mice, did you look at lifespan or health span in comparison with Sort of. So health spin, yeah, life spin, not. So I'm not rich. So a lifespan study requires like more money than I have to do the mice. So we use them at uh, 20 months. So health span, yes, because if we're going to use them at 20 months, we have to keep them alive to 20 months. And uh, we monitor for like health conditions and stuff like that. And it's kind of like a financial tragedy if a mouse dies before that 20 month time period. So in that health span aspect, we do see that the, we have to cull fewer TNF knockout female mice uh, than wild type mice because they don't develop the same degree of health issues. So the female knockout mice seem, I can't say they live longer, but more of them make it to sort of late mouse life, you know what I mean? And if you ask me to make a like a informed guess just by looking at all these mice and knowing the mice as I do, I would say they're definitely gonna live longer. But the males, it's kind of a different story. Like the male mice, you know how that men die quicker, but women live sicker. The female mice really do. We do see more frailty develop and it's sort of this protracted, they can live with this frailty index for mice. So we can actually like pick out the healthy agers not versus the not so healthy agers. And like the female mice, definitely the wild types do can live with a protracted period of, of moderate frailty. The male mice, they go along, they go along, they die. The male TNF knock, they go along, they go along, they die. So uh, so the I don't think it's life extending in the males, no. Does that equal the same thing in humans? It's the million dollar question, right? Because, and I think there, you know, there are data sets out there that we could probe. Like again, looking at people who take these drugs for their various diseases and conditions, we do know that actually they seem to work better in men than women, a lot of these, in, women may be more likely to have rheumatological conditions. I think the gut stuff, Crohn's and IBD are sort of more similar between the sexes. Um, we do know anti-TNF therapy seems to work a lot better for a lot longer in some of these conditions than men than women. So presumably the TNF is really important in men um, and why these don't work quite as well or women have more side effects or things like that are probably right down to the biology of how we use the cytokine. And I, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, if you asked me to gamble, if you said, Don, your TNF is really high, let, let me give you a low dose anti-TNF inhibitor. I would probably be pretty receptive to that discussion based on what I know, but you know, it is an important cytokine for infections, right? So if you go on anti-TNF, you might have, you, you have to get, usually you have to get a TB test. You have to get all, you know, it is really important for monitoring and suppressing chronic inflammation. So Risk benefit, hard to say.